Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this workers' retreat. We bless your name because you have granted us journey mercies. You have protected us and you have brought us in here safely. O oh Lord, we are praying that you will fulfill your purpose of bringing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we are praying that every word you will speak to us will find a place of usefulness and profit in every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that we will be attentive people. We will be obedient people. We will yield ourselves to the word you are bringing to us in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that there will be seriousness among the workers, prayerfulness among the workers, and obedience among the workers in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever will hinder us from our own personal habits or from our carelessness, you will cut all this away from our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. May we understand that you are here in our midst. And may we give you all the honor, all the respect that you deserve as our Lord and as our Savior in the midst of the church. Lord, we pray that we will get the best from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be with us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name. I pray. Let's all be seated, please. It's a joy of my heart that this day has come, the day for your own workers' retreat. And yet, I must tell you that as I welcome you to this retreat, I need to tell you the reason why you have come at this particular time. For some time now, many leaders and members of Deeper Life Bible Church all over this nation and outside this nation have sensed an increasing burden that it is very necessary for all people who are associated with Deeper Christian Life Ministry or Deeper Life Bible Church to trace and rediscover our spiritual roots. Many of us will recognize the falling standards in Deeper Life and in every area of the church life, the preaching, the life, the commitment of the workers, the understanding of Christian teaching and Christian practice. And many of us have sensed this burden for a long time. And I believe that this is God's time for you and for me, that we will rediscover the old-fashioned faith. And as we have come to the well of living waters, this week, I believe that you will drink. This retreat has been specially prepared so that we'll have much time for meditation, prayers, and reflection on all that we're hearing. You will see in the program that we have not loaded the program with seminars and discussions on methodology. Because the central appeal of the retreat we're having this time is heart experience rather than head education. We're living in a time of anxiety over many things. And there are Christians that want to know about a lot of things. But just one thing is necessary. And that is the single thing we are concentrating on at this workers' retreat. And I counsel you that you will leave all other things of temporary value. I'm convinced that you need your convictions to be centered on the word of God once again. 
and that your consecration shall be strengthened in a fresh way once again. And I believe that this retreat can be a turning point in your Christian life. If you will allow God to do something definite on your heart, and if you will endure, I believe that the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I want you to look at Acts chapter 9, verse 6. And he trembling and a sonny said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Acts chapter 22, verse 10. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee all things which are appointed for thee to do. I've read to you about Paul the Apostle. At this time, he was Saul. He was going to Damascus. He had a different purpose in mind. He had his own intention for going to Damascus. But then the Lord met him on the way. Pay attention. Yet, all that God had for him could not be given him on the way where the Lord met him. You see, there are many people, they make a great mistake. They say, I have met the Lord. I have seen the Lord. I have heard from the Lord. This is not my first time of hearing from the Lord. God, Christ, the Holy Ghost, could not give to Saul all that he needed on the way. At the first time, he met the Lord. The great mistake many people have made is that they tell us, I'm not a novice. I know the voice of the Lord. He had appeared unto me. He had blessed me before. Yes, my friend. But you have not got anything yet. God will never give you everything at the first time that he met you. And he asked the Lord, he said, what will thou have me to do? There are many people as they come in here, instead of asking, what will you want me to do? They will be asking, what will the church do for me? Well, we can preach to you, but I cannot repent for you. We can give you the instruction of the word of God, but I cannot obey that instruction for you. We can tell you about the power of God to reform, to refine, to transform. But I cannot reform you. And I cannot refine you. Neither can I renew you. There is something in your own hand that you have to do. But many people as they come to a place like this, they'll be wondering, what will the General superintendent, the pastor in Lagos, what will he do for me? That's the wrong question. What will you do? And so Saul was asking, what will you have me to do? The reason many people have not got much in their Christian life or in their Christian faith is that they have this dependency attitude. They don't want to repent on their own. They don't want to avoid or abstain from the things that are wrong on their own. They want the church to do it for them. The pastor to do it for them. The preacher to do it for them. The stage to do it for them. The ministry to do it for them. The choir to do it for them. The prayer warriors to do it for them. The Christians to do it for them. What will you have me to do? And if you don't ask that question and get something done, you will remain a mediocre through your Christian life. But it is when you are willing to bear the yoke, when you say, I am going to do something, 
you say, I am going to apply myself to instruction. And all that is important to you as you come in these meetings is, Lord, what will you have me to do? And there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. And you must open up your heart saying, Lord, whatever it is, I will do it. Whatever it will take, I will go all the way through. Now the Lord could have told him, but he did not tell him. You see, I pity people that look down on the preachers of the gospel. I pity people that think they can get everything they can get from the Lord on their own. And the people that will say, I don't need the church. I don't need the preachers. I don't need those leaders. I can read the Bible myself. My friend, Saul was a member of the Sanhedrin. He knew some of the passages of the Old Testament by heart. He knew a lot of those Old Testament passages. At the snap of the finger, he could recite everything. And yet, he did not understand the interpretation and the meaning. Without the Holy Ghost, you will not understand anything in the Bible. And the Holy Ghost is not going to make the person understand if he's not willing to be taught, if he's not teachable. And so Saul said, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise, go into the city. He told him, there's a lot you need to know. A lot you will do. I have chosen you as an instrument. He didn't tell him that at that time, but that's what the Lord had in mind. And he was to do great things for the glory of God. And if you know his story, eventually, out of the 27 books of the New Testament, eventually he wrote 13. Of all the apostles, he labored more than them all. And he was the person that God used in a mighty way to tell us about the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead like no other apostle. He was the person that God used to tell us the doctrine about the rapture of the church like no other person. He's the one that revealed the mystery between Christ and the church like no other person. He's the one that used the symbolism of the church as the body of Christ like no other person. It's only from his writing that we know about the gifts of the Spirit like no other person. It's from him that you see the gifts and the signs of the apostles more than any other person. But even him, God will not tell him on the road what he should do. He needed to go to the city and it will be told him. A lot of people tell us that the Lord has given them great dreams of what they are going to become. You will not become what you ought to become without getting to the city to be told what you ought to do. And as we have come to this workers' retreat, understand this is not accidental. God has brought you over here for a particular reason. If you do not hear what you ought to hear, there is something God is saying, and God will say, if you miss it now that you are here, you may never hear it again. And you may never be what you ought to be. So God told Saul, he said, go into the city. You will be told what you will do. Now you have come here so that you can be told what you will do. And it will be good for you to apply yourself to wisdom and to the word of God and to say, Lord, whatever it is, I am willing to hear. Are you willing to hear? Then the Lord himself will know how to bless you. But remember the question, what shall I do? What will you have me to do? Sometimes when people come to Lagos here, they're waiting for me to pray for them. That's not the reason for the workers' retreat. The workers' retreat is not for healing. Workers' retreat is not for miracle. Miracle of 
having bread, having butter, having healing, having deliverance, having children. That's not the purpose of this workers' retreat. The reason we have come for workers' retreat is that God will do something in your life that you will become a qualified, equipped, powerful minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the reason we have come together this week. We do not want to see people... Uh, waiting somewhere and they are saying well I am sick I want somebody to pray for me pray for yourself what will you have me to do I've come here to this workers retreat I thought I will see man of God we are all men of God not only the pastor is man of God that's part of what we are teaching our people in Lagos now Paul told Timothy he said O thou man of God, flee all these things and follow after righteousness and faith and goodness and follow after holiness of life. Anyone who flees from all the things of the world and all the, all the loss of the flesh and is following after righteousness, holiness and faith, that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. So we don't want anybody hiding behind us somewhere. I want to see man of God. If you are a believer, you are a man of God yourself. If you are a believer, you are a woman of God yourself. Pray and get rid of that evil thing that is hanging on your neck. That, that evil thing that is hanging on your back. Pray and get rid of it. Anyone here can pray. You can pray. Can't you pray? If you can't pray, then you are dead. A real child of God who is alive in Christ, he can pray and he can get healed. Why we have come here is that God will do a definite work in your heart. That the people who need to be restored, who need to be renewed, who need to be refined, who need to be transformed, who need a total change, that God will do it for them. That's why we are here. That your Christian life, your spiritual life, will be what it ought to be. That if there are restitutions in your life you have not made, that you will make the restitution. And that if there is still any of you around here that you do not know about Christian dressing, I am believing that before you leave this retreat ground, all the worldly dressing you packed in here, you'll throw them into the bush before you go away. And that a mighty change will take place in your life. And that if there are some of you that still have the identification mark of Egypt on you. You say you are a worker. You have your earring. You have your um, hand ring. You have your uh, wrist ring. You have your leg ring. Or whatever type of ring. Uh, the devil has put one on your hand, in your finger, on your nose, in your ears. Before you go, I am believing that God will make a definite change in your life. All those jewelry of the identification of the devil, you dig the ground, you bury them. That's the unclean thing. You bury the unclean thing, then you go clean to your stage. I believe that will happen. And if there are some of you that, when you have been in your state, all that you have been hearing about, the television being the devil's box, oh, you say, no, I will never part with my television. You don't want to part with the world. You don't want to part with the devil. You are married to the devil. Don't you know the devil is inside that thing? And some people say, I will never part. You must do something. You'll be asking the Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord will tell you a lot of things you are going to do. And if you really mean business with the Lord, you are going to do all that the Lord wants you to do. And your life will change. I said your life will change. Yeah. When your life changes in that way, then you will know that you are now a real worker. When you have been saved, when you have been sanctified, and there is a real change in your life. Now, before that change can take place, you will have to pray. I see many people that don't pray in, in their understanding. 
Because especially for some of the people that are coming from some states where they talk about Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and they know nothing about the Holy Ghost. Immediately they hear a message on restitution. Instead of saying, Lord, I need to make that restitution, give me grace. I need to get rid of that thing, give me grace. I need to handle that in my life, give me grace. Immediately after the message, they begin speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues like that and go to the hottest part of hell. Speaking in tongues doesn't show spirituality. For some people, it is a cloak, a covering for backsliding. They do not have spiritual lives. They do not have any understanding of the scripture. They hear about restitution. They hear about repentance. They hear about change of life. They hear about all the evil things they are doing in their lives. They ought to get rid of instead of praying and really praying. Repenting and giving themselves to the Lord. They will be speaking in tongues. You might be totally lost. Lost. Do you know that the Holy Ghost can forsake you while you are speaking in that tongue that is mechanical? You grieve the Holy Spirit. When he's pointing at something in your life, get rid of that thing. Remove that thing. Wash up that thing. Go and apologize to that other fellow. Go and get that thing right. And then you neglect the voice of the Holy Ghost and you begin to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost will get away from you. An evil spirit will take over. That's why you find people who speak in tongues and yet their lives are devilish, demonic. But we have come in here in the hostel. We do not want to see people wasting their lives, wasting their time. There is anger, there is jealousy, there is immorality, there is fornication, there is masturbation, there is adultery, there is um, immorality or immaturity. And yet, in the morning when you wake up, instead of reading the Bible and having serious, quiet time, they just rise up and sing and speak in tongues, you can go to hell that way. But when you see your life and you say, Lord, here I come. I don't want anybody reading anything now. I'm preaching to you. When you come to a workers meeting like this, and you see that this is the word of God that will reshape your life, change your life, and you go on your knees and you say, Lord, here is something wrong in my life. Here is something wrong in my life. Here is something wrong in my life. I am going to make this right. If you don't do that and you do any other thing, take my word as a representative of the Lord. If you do any other thing, you don't repent. You don't dig the ground and bury all those evil, immoral things in your life. And you are just speaking in tongues, you will be lost. And the Spirit of God will leave you. But it is when you say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? What will I do? A lot of people that... You say you are workers who are not greeting one another. Animosity, bitterness, evil in your heart. You will not repent. A lot of people backsliding. They slash their brothers and sisters in pieces. They say they are workers. At these workers retreat. You see, this is the reason that I'm staying with you all through. You see, at Bagada tomorrow, we'll be having three services. And um, anybody who knows that uh, the way I take pastoral work in Lagos here, I do it with all my heart. Last week, I was in Ondo State from Tuesday to Saturday morning. And we, you know, traveled about. I preached a lot of messages in Ondo State that time. I came back here on Saturday. I still handled the workers' meeting on Saturday. And all my five services on Sunday, I still preach my five services. On Monday, I still preach all the three services. That's how serious I take the work in Lagos here. And yet, for me to abandon all that at Bagada for tomorrow and just stay here with you all through tonight, all through tomorrow, all through Friday till Saturday morning, it's because I want something to be done in your life. You see, we have lost something in deeper life. 
very, very seriously. We've lost a lot of things. We've lost sanctification. We've lost holiness. We've lost Christian dressing. We've lost commitment. We've lost constancy, consecration, and consistency. We've lost being dead to the things of the world. We've lost a lot of real honesty and yieldedness to the Lord. We've lost real spiritual power. We've lost humility. We've lost teachability. We've lost a lot of things. And these few days you have, all those things you have lost, we want to regain them back. And this is the reason why we're here. You see that your Christian life has become shallow. This is the time you will dig deep and you say, Lord, what will I do? See, for three days and for three nights, Paul the Apostle, before he became the Apostle, when he met the Lord on the way to Damascus, he was praying all those three days and three nights. Now that's what we're going to do here. That all the time you are here, you must pray each through. And that means everybody, you will pray. I will pray. No, I'm not talking about praying for healing. I'm not talking about praying for bread and butter. I'm talking about praying to recover all that we have lost. In fact, let me talk to you like I talk to the Lagos people. If that is not your intention, you should not remain at the workers' meeting. I told you already that you are too many. And if you are here, you are not ready to pray. You are not ready to have a real change of life. You are not ready to recover all that we have lost. There is no reason to be here. In the Lagos church here, I tell them in the Sunday meeting that the people we want in this church are the people that will help us, will recover all the spiritual qualities we have lost. Those are the only people we want in the church, even for ordinary members. Yesterday, I counseled in Lagos here. And when people come, I see their cards, they're right there, I've married, I don't have any child. I ask them, are you born again? If the testimony is not clear to me, I take the card, I say, go back to your zonal leader, tell him I didn't pray for you. Tell him, I want you to be born again. When you are born again, come back, I'm holding your card. And I told them yesterday, that if I pray for you, that sickness is gone, but you are not born again, you will go to hell with the healing. And a lot of people yesterday, another woman came, had the tummy swollen for six years. She had been carrying that swollen tummy about. And she came to see me yesterday for counseling. And when she came, I said, are you born again? Well, she talked, I said, that's not it. I took the card, I said, go back to your zonal leader. Let them explain to you what it means to be born again. I explained to her myself. I said, pray, get born again. After that, come back, I will pray for you. A young man who is born again himself brought his father having cancer. And uh, after uh, the man said, I want you to pray for my father, I saw the card. I said, father, are you born again? And I said, it was inside the religion. I gave birth to this. I, uh, that's religion. Religion can take a person to hell. So I asked the boy, you are running about that your father should be healed from cancer. This man is old. And the father was hearing me. I said, this man is old. He's nearer the grave than a lot of people here. And you don't tell him what it means to be born again. You want your father to go to hell? And I said, Papa, if you are not born again, you will go to hell. That you need to be born again. Because it is cancer and very serious, I prayed for him. But I told him, even if you get healed and you do not get real salvation, you will go to hell. You know why I did that? That's how we used to do it. Those who are long and deeper life will know that's how we used to do it. And in Lagos here, yeah, praise the Lord, we have come back to where we were before. And if you have not come back there, you are coming back there this weekend. And this uh, weekend, as we pray, I don't want you to clap. 
as we preach. I don't want you to clap. All that I have been saying, the clapping that you did, I just excused you because I knew that you have just come. That I knew that you will have to be washed clean before you go back. Do you understand? So this worker's retreat is to make definite change in our lives. And you will be asking the Lord, what will I do? And as I said, the worker's retreat is for everyone. Everyone. And you will pay attention to all the things that you are hearing. And a change will come in your life. That means that you will have real time with the Lord. We will be serving you food. But the food is not our major problem. If it's ready, we eat. If it is not ready, we continue to pray. Can you do that? At the time we ought to be meeting here, you look at the program. Not that somebody will be chasing you all around, saying, go to the meeting now, go to the meeting now. See the time on the program. Be here on time so we can cover everything that we need to cover. And then, there must be no complaints. Now you will discover, as I minister, that when I want to rebuke you, I rebuke you. You see, I will be afraid of a church where the father cannot rebuke children. Would you like a church like that? Therefore, there are times, because I'm still going to talk a lot about your television. And um, over here in Lagos, we don't know IFL, we don't know ordinary people. We just regard believers as believers. And God doesn't have two standards. We have only one standard. And if you say you are IFL and you are not keeping to the standard of the word of God, you'll be surprised on the last day, you'll be forever lost. So, I'm still going to talk a lot about the television, about Christian dressing, about Christian marriage, about Christian comportment, about Christian life, about attitudes and relationships, about all the things that you need to know. I hope you don't get annoyed when I talk. Are you sure? Now, the Bible says, let a righteous mind smite me. It shall be ointment upon my head. In Lagos here, we discipline anybody that commits sin. Whether IFL or no IFL. In fact, now, in my messages, I don't mention IFL. I just preach the word of God to everybody. And the one that is a sinner, if, he rich, if he's a rich man, if he's a sinner... The same way to get saved is that same way it will take. In fact, it's more difficult for a rich man to get to heaven than a poor man. And that's why for those who are below, say they belong to IFL, it's more difficult for you to get to heaven. Jesus said that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to get to the kingdom of God. And that's the truth of the word of God. If you're a rich man, don't show it. Don't be proud. Offload all the pride and come down, bend low at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I want to get to heaven. It will take repentance. It will take restitution. It will take a lot of things that you ought to do. So, you'll be hearing the word of God. If you are a member of the church, we have the same standard for every member. Educated people or whoever. In Lagos, that's the standard we're keeping. We have professors at universities who come to our church. In Lagos here, if they want to see me, they do exactly what other people do. They go through the same system that other people go through before they see me. Because we're all equal in the sight of God. And if all these things have been wrong in your life, 
you have to set them right. And as you are asking the Lord, what will you have me to do? And as he answers you, I pray that you will not reject the word of God in Jesus' name. And as I've said to you, those who are coming for the first time, get ready for the word of God. The important thing is to hear the word of God. Don't think about the communication. Don't think about this, the way they should talk to me. This is the way they should preach. We know that more than you. The Holy Ghost knows that more than you. Yours is Lord, speak, for thy servant heareth. Tonight, I'm uh, taking this approach to get you prepared for all the messages we will be giving to you. And I want you to rise up on your feet now and promise the Lord that this workers' retreat will do something in your life and the change that ought to be made will be made in your life. You will be teachable. You will be obedient. You will hear the word of God and you will take to the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for bringing us to this workers' retreat, purposely to bring us back to the original state wherein the ministry began. And we thank you because it is not too late for us to amend our lives and to re-examine our spiritual lives, to rediscover those things that we have lost. We know you love us. You do not want us to end up in regret at the end of time. You don't want any of us to get to the pearly gate and to be rejected by the Holy Lord. Because you will not compromise your standard with anybody. You will not change your word for anyone. Your word is your word. And your standard is unchangeable. And what you want us to be is what you want us to be. We have no right to amend your word. Neither can we live any other way apart from the way you have, you have laid down in your word. Father, we pray that our coming here, O oh Lord, will not be in vain in Jesus' name. But as you speak to us, we will hear your word. We will obey your word. We will, come, we will do your will in Jesus' name. Those things that are wrong in our lives, Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, we give you a free hand. Correct us in Jesus' name. Where we have been making mistakes. Where we have been following error instead of the real thing. Either because of ignorance or because of wanting to be like other people who have missed the way. Lord, we pray this, this time around, oh God, bring us back to the narrow road in Jesus' name. Amen. We know that straight is the way and narrow is the road that lead to life. Few there be that tread on it. We're asking, oh Lord, that we not follow the way of the multitude anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, restore us back. Help us to rediscover your perfect will for our lives in Jesus' name. It is holiness or nothing else. It is righteousness or nothing else. Lord, we are asking, you will so help us as we hear your word, as we receive instructions, as we are corrected, as we are moved from the wrong side to the right side, O oh Lord, we pray we will not hinder you in any way in Jesus' name. We will pray, we will meditate, 
we will spend a lot of time to, re to re-examine our spiritual lives. Oh Lord, we pray that by the help of the Holy Spirit, you will help every one of us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to shun those things that can hinder us. Amen. The physical things. All those physical things that are not important. Oh Lord, we pray. We will put them aside and we will go for the real thing that will make us to be different from what, how we came here in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to us as your children and give us a willing and obedient heart to follow in Jesus' name. Amen. What you have for us, O oh Lord, we pray. None of us will reject it. In our heart, write your word. Let our spirit, O oh Lord, be yielded to the spirit of God that will be uh, through the word of God in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered us. As all of us break our fallow ground all over again, O oh Lord, mold us back. All the cracks in the world. Oh Lord, we pray you amend everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Where we have leaked away. Oh Lord, we pray all the leaking points, all the leaking areas in our lives. Oh God, we pray you will totally cement everything back in Jesus' name. Amen. All our emptiness, oh Lord. All our emptiness, oh Lord. Father, we pray this met under this program. You will fill us back in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray nobody will harden his heart against your word. Thank you because you have answered us. In Jesus